You're not the only one who's good at games around here, Turing. Uh, are we to work together, then? I prefer to have my own office. You're a team, and you will work as one. I, I don't have time to explain myself uh, as I go along, and I'm afraid these men would only slow me down. What's the difference between I'm afraid, I'm afraid not, and I'm afraid so? With the emulation game and other examples, you'll never forget. Hello everyone! Today we're going to learn 11 idioms with the imitation game. A movie with a British accent. The imitation game is about Alan Turing and the creation of the first computer in history, which was made in the time of the World Wide II. Two people go to the house of Alan Turing in the role of Benedict Cumberbatch. And because the house has been robbed... Disappointing. Pardon? I, I had hoped for a bit more. Sergeant Stahl, is it just me, or do you get the sense that we're being insulted? Last night, you had a break-in. Your neighbor, Mr. Springborn, called to report the noise. Break-in means to force entry into a place criminally. To enter some place forcibly for the purpose of robbery or the other illegal act. To get into a building or car using force, usually to steal something. The first example is the movie Ant-Man, where they are planning to rob a company, and they say we should enter there and steal the technology. Now, unless we break in and steal the yellow jacket and destroy all the data, Darren Cross is going to unleash chaos upon the world. The second is the Archer series. In the first episode, Archer spends a lot of money on the company. And the company's accountant said he wants to enter the information department and delete the documents. With the knife. Yeah, I can't let you in there. Can't or won't? Either? And after I gave you Stir Friday. Yeah, that is much better. I know, but so... But if you want to access the mainframe... What? I guess you'd have to break in. <laughs> break into the ISIS mainframe. Which is obviously ludicrous. This is this baby corn. What is that about? Archer? If we could teach you at least one new idiom, please like it. Well, the sequence we started was a flash forward. Now, the main part of the story begins. When Ellen goes to a member of the government, wants to enter a secret plan to find the Nazis. At the beginning of the interview, he wants to convince the guy that he might be a genius at the young age. And the person says, And you don't think that qualifies you as a certified prodigy? Well, Newton discovered binomial theorem age 22. Einstein wrote four papers that changed the world by the age of 26. As far as I can tell, I've, uh, <laughs> I've barely made par. I can't, you're serious. Would you prefer I made a joke? No, I don't think you know what those are. Hardly seems fair that that's a requirement for employment here, Mr... Commander Denniston, Royal Navy. All right, Mr. Turing, I'll bite. Why do you wish to work for His Majesty's government? I bite means, OK, you make me curious and I want to know more. For example, I heard some important news about the company stock. Okay, I'll buy it. What's the news? The first example, let's go to Family Guy. Peter enters somewhere and starts talking about sports. And Joe also says, okay, I'll listen. <laughs> Oh, ping pong, huh? That's cute. Me, I like American games. Okay, I'll bite. No, I'm just saying ping pong's not bad, but I'll tell you what's better. Foosball. Isn't it generally... The blacklist. Reddington is given information about a dangerous criminal to Elizabeth, an FBI agent, so that FBI can arrest that criminal. Elizabeth says, I'll bite, wait for the rest of the information. You want me to find the doctor who helps change criminals' identities? Find the doctor, find the criminals. Why him? Why now? Opportunity. Dr. Kohler's been cited, which is as rare as citing the P 
pygmy three-toed sloth. Only 79 of the deer creatures are left. Okay, I'll bite. Sighted where? Well, the governor tells him, why do you want to work for government? Let's see Alan's answer. All right, Mr. Turing, I'll bite. Why do you wish to work for His Majesty's government? Oh, I don't really. Your Majesty or His Majesty or Her Majesty. Used when we talk to or about a king or queen. We also have a synonym for Royal Highness, which we explained in this video. Plus lots of terms with another British movie. Well, for examples of Majesty, let's start with Aladdin live action. Live action. Where Aladdin entered the palace, he wants to respect the queen, but he's making a mistake. Uh... I did. For you, Princess Jasmine. Your Majesty. Why are you being weird? Next, Alice in Wonderland. The queen is very mad because the loss of one of her jam and is looking for the person who ate it. Someone has stolen three of my tots! Did you steal them? No, Your Majesty. Did you? No, Your Majesty. Did you steal them? No, Your Majesty. Your Majesty. It's Quimberry juice. I was so hungry. I didn't mean Open to. Open My family. Oh, please, please don't. Lord. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. When Alan told the governor that I don't want to work for the government, he tells him that you are a. Are you a bleeding pacifist? I'm agnostic about that. Pacifist. A pacifist is someone who believes that violence is wrong and refuses to take part in wars. Let's go to friends where they're talking about war and Phoebe says, I'm not interested in war, but if there is a war. Well, you all know that I am a pacifist, so I'm not interested in war in any way. <laughs> But you know what? When the revolution comes, I will have to destroy you all. <laughs> Not you, Joe. Crisis and Sixes series. <laughs> Crisis and Sixes in series. They're talking about past politicians. And someone was against them. And they tell him... What do you have against Andrew Jackson? He was a slave owner. So, 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 150 years ago, when everybody had slaves. George Washington had slaves then. The guy was a military man, and, and this was meant to be a protest against the war, against Vietnam, against all wars. Since when are you a pacifist? There are no slaves anymore. No. The governor tells him that we are at war now. And Alan said, politics. But you do realize that 600 miles away from London, there's this nasty little chap called Hitler who wants to engulf Europe in tyranny. And politics isn't really my area of expertise. Really? My area of expertise are a person's professional skills and abilities that typically related to an industry or field. This expression has kind of synonym. Strong suit which we mentioned before in the video of King's Speech. In Brooklyn Nine-Nine series, the police want to enter prison undercover. Someone says that I'm going to be a doctor and my special day is. No, I said no to that idea. You are Isaac Schwartz, my older Jewish mentor, and you are Isabel Cortez. You're in for stabbing a man on the subway 46 times in the trachea. Tight. The pregnancy stuff is my area of expertise. Since Genevieve started fertility treatments, it's all we talk about. Now. Captain America, the first Avenger, 
is a movie with atmosphere of World War of World War II. When the elements are losing because of Captain America and the commander is very nervous, he tells the scientists that you better finish the mission quickly. And he says that fire is not my area of expertise. You are failing! We are close to an offensive that will shake the planet. Yet we are continually delayed because you cannot outwit a simpleton with a shield. This is hardly my area of expertise. I, I merely develop the weapons. I, I cannot fire them. Finish your mission, Doctor, before the American finishes his. Well, the governor was not really convinced that Alan should enter the plan. And Alan says that my mother used to say that I can be a mathematician some days. Well, I believe you just set the record for the shortest job interview in British military history. Oh, uh, <laughs> mother says I can be off-putting sometimes oh, on account of being one of the best mathematicians in the world. In the world? Oh, yes. Off-putting. If you describe something as off-putting, you mean that it makes you dislike that thing or not want to get involved with it. It's unpleasant. Let's see two examples from Rick and Morty. First, a space delivery enters the house, which is not very nice. And Rick says that it's similar to our deliveries, but less of pudding. Delivery for Rick, Morty, Summer, Beth, and Jerry. Gross, what is that thing? It's a courier flap. It's like the intergalactic version of UPS, but less off-putting. Second, when Rick and Morty fall into a collector, Rick says that it's like the others, but the less of pudding. Can't believe we got put into a menagerie. So this guy collects living beings? Yeah, you know, like commemorative plates, but less off-putting. You'll get. Well, let's see, Alan, one more time, again, because he said as a mathematician. Mother says I can be off-putting sometimes, oh, on account of being one of the best mathematicians in the world. On account means because of something. Fargo series where the killer has been arrested but the police are unsure and he is lying down well. They tell him, where did you go by car that night? And he says, I don't drive because my eyes are weak. I said, what, Minnesota's not cold enough for you? <laughs> we had a good laugh about that. Also, you're saying you weren't pulled over for speeding. No, sir, I'm a cautious driver by nature on account of my eyesight. Glaucoma, they say it is. Friends, when Ross had to go a psychologist because of anger at work, and here he's drunk and came to Monica and Chandra. Chandra. Ross? Hey, Chandra. <laughs> Monica. Ross, are you okay? I'm fine. I saw a psychiatrist at work today. Why? On account of my rage. <laughs> Which, if I may say right now, is out of control. The governor is nervous because Alan doesn't even know German and wants to decode the code and says, Knows German better than Bertolt Brecht. I don't speak German. What? I don't speak German. Oh, they're really very good at games, uh, puzzles, and uh, this is the most d uh, difficult puzzle in the world. Margaret! For the love of God. This is a joke, obviously. For the love of God, you used to show that you're so angry. Well, let's see how Ross used it. When everyone is late for Thanksgiving, and they want to get inside the house anyway, and Monica was so angry. They're making excuses. And Chandler says you're lying because you want. All right, come on. All right, you guys. We're so sorry we're late. Please let us in so we can have dinner together. No, everything's cold. The turkey's dried out and the, the stuffing's all soggy. Yeah, and there's a bowl of cranberry sauce. That... What happens to cranberry sauce? Nothing. It's fine. Oh, thank God. <laughs> come on, you guys. We're sorry. Our... Our subway broke down. That's a lie. You went to the game. I can see Joey's hand. For the love of God, take it off! <laughs> now here, we have gone back a few seasons. 
Joey calls Chandra and tries to tease him and makes his voice sound like a woman. Hello, Chandler Bing. Hello, Mr. Bing. I love you. All right, whoever this is, stop calling me. It's been six months. It's not funny. But I love you. Leave me alone. For the love of God, leave me alone. And that's Wednesday. The governor realized that Alan knows about Enigma machine and said let me be in a plan and try my best. Now the commander is showing scientists the only Enigma device they have and... It's beautiful. It's the crooked hand of death itself. Our wrens intercept thousands of radio messages a day. But to the lovely young ladies of the Women's Royal Navy, they're nonsense. It's only when you feed them back into Enigma that they make any sense. But we have an Enigma machine. Mm, yes, police intelligence smuggled it out of Berlin. So what's the problem? Just put the interceptor messages back into the Enigma and you'll but get... It's not that simple, is it? Smuggle? To take someone or something to or from place secretly and often illegally. Real animation, where the doctor is showing the birds to Linda and says that these birds are killed or injured when they are smuggled. Many of the birds here were rescued from smugglers. Smugglers? Yes. And unfortunately, <laughs> the poor birds are often hurt or even killed in the process. But with proper care, they can be saved. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, where Jake is talking to his father and his father is a pilot, tells him that some drugs were found in his bag and he's accused of smuggling. And because Jake is a policeman, Jake, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. Last week, I was flying into Albany from Quebec. You know how I always keep my snowboard with me in case I get a chance to carve. <sighs> He's so cool. Well, Canadian Customs found some prescription meds in my board bag. They're accusing me of smuggling. What? Yeah, I have no idea how they got in there. They're not mine, but it's... Well, let's go to where I promised at the first of the video. Alan wants to work on Enigma on his own and says this people. You're not the only one who's good at games around here, Turing. Uh, are we to work together, then? I prefer to have my own office. You're a team, and you will work as one. I, I don't have time to explain myself uh, as I go along, and I'm afraid these men would only slow me down. <laughs> well, first, let's check I'm afraid and find out the difference between I'm afraid so and I'm afraid not. I'm afraid means if you want to apologize to someone, or politely disagree with them. You can say I'm afraid. The first example is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. At the end of the movie where Harry thinks that Voldemort can't come back and Dumbledore tells him that unfortunately there is always a way to come back. What does that mean? With the stone gone that is, that Voldemort can never come back? Oh, I'm afraid. There are ways in which he can return. Well, now the difference. I'm afraid not. Used to politely say no. I'm afraid so. Unfortunately, yes. Instead of yes, your answer could upset or disappoint someone. Let's go to Harry Potter again. This time at the beginning of the movie. And again, Dumbledore will come first, but the rumors are true. Good evening, Professor Dumbledore. Are the rumors true? Help us. I'm afraid so, Professor. The good and the bad. Well, I'm afraid not. Let's go to the Fleabag series. These two sisters are going to enter a relaxation course. And one of the sisters wants a separate drone. But the attendant says, unfortunately, we don't have any. Do you have Wi-Fi? No. Um, would you like two single beds or a double? A double, two singles. please. Actually, do you have a separate room? I'm afraid not. Everyone has to share here. It's part of the communal. Singles, thing. then. Do you get newspapers in the morning? I hope you're not bored and have learned new things. We will be back with a tutorial with the Fullback series. Until the next video.